Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is my good friend, uh, Dave Chesson. Uh, Dave is an SEO whiz. Uh, he's the creator of Kindlepreneur.com, uh, also of the software tool Publisher Rocket, and this is one of the, one of the top tools and probably most recommended tools um, at self-publishing school. So we recommend just about every author that we work with uh, use Publisher Rocket as they're going through uh, the writing and publishing process. Uh, Dave also helped us a ton on the SEO side of things. Uh, I, I owe so much to this guy and, and so much just thanks and appreciation. Uh, he came in early on and was like, hey, you're screwing everything up. <laughs> and here's what you need to do. Let's fix this. And, and it's really just helped us uh, grow and, and, and grow as a business. And so uh, he also spoke at Author Advantage Live last year. It was a, a, a kind of a, a favorite session from a lot of folks and it just really uh, really great things uh, there as well. So uh, today we're going to be talking about, and this is going to be an action-packed, punchy, quick episode. We're going to be talking about keywords, categories, using SEO on Amazon, uh, and maybe even Amazon ads if we have time. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to get into that. Um, but Dave, really great to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's dive in. You're, you're, you're an SEO whiz. And I think when most people think about SEO, they think Google, right? Uh, and I always say, Google is a search engine of browsers. Amazon is a search engine of buyers. So while everyone's exactly. focused on SEO from a Google perspective, not many people are thinking about SEO from an Amazon perspective. Why is it important and how does SEO work? And actually, maybe let's just roll back a little bit. Like, what is SEO? Why is it important and specifically with Amazon and with authors who are looking to sell more books? Sure. Well, SEO stands for search engine optimization. And a search engine is anytime you go to one of those boxes and you type something into it, then that search engine helps to find what it is you're probably looking for and present it to you. That sounds like Google. That sounds like Amazon. That sounds like YouTube. They're all different search engines. And so understanding what it is they look for and how they choose what to show that person is what SEO is all about. So this is like trying to get your website to rank for a search term when somebody types it into Google. Or more importantly, what we're talking about today is what do you need to do in order to convince Amazon so that when somebody types something into that search box, they show your book over somebody else's. And this is really important because this is really about discoverability. If Amazon does not choose to show your book, no matter what, you won't make sales unless you yourself go find the person, grab them and bring them to your book. And I personally like the idea of making Amazon make sales for me. Uh, a combination of the two are even better. But the point is, is getting Amazon on your side helps your book to be discovered, helps you to make sales, and more importantly, sales for the long term and not some short term. That's I love that so much. Long term, not short term. It's a uh, we use the analogy. It's like it's it's the it's the sports car versus uh, the Toyota Camry, <laughs> and the sports car is like fun. It's flashy. It's loud. But then that's the way most people look at their book launches: is this shoo going and gone, right? And it right. used up all this energy. It's, it's like, but then how do we more so uh, create this Toyota Camry <laughs> that just just keeps going, keeps and going. Keeps going and keeps and I, that's what I think is the magic of SEO on both sides. So. Let's kind of bridge the gap and then I want to get into X and O's keywords, categories, all that stuff. What is Publisher Rocket and, and how, how does Publisher Rocket help authors sell more books? Yeah, well, the best way to answer this is kind of start back in my journey on writing. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that I was never a, a whiz at writing. I actually grew up with dyslexia um, and I always thought I wasn't meant to write. Uh, however, though, when the time came that I was trying to become a writer, because just because you have dyslexia or just because you're not a great writer doesn't mean the dream of writing is is shouldn't be there so for me though in order to overcome my lack of hemingway capabilities okay i understood the the core principle that if people want something and they can't find it but you have the answer then you don't have to be hemingway in order to be the person that solves their problem and so I started to ask myself, well, how can I figure out what it is people want on Amazon and that there aren't books truly serving them? And when I took that approach, I was able to find subjects that I wanted to write about. Um, I was also able to take subjects I wanted to write about and change them a bit to really fit a market. And I did all of this research to try to figure it out. And the truth of the matter was, was that back in the day, I was using these hardcore spreadsheets with 
you know, in essence, the spreadsheets had programming inside of them to calculate and bring everything together. Well, authors don't like spreadsheets. That's just not our thing, um, you know, except for weird people like me, maybe. <laughs> and so I got together a bunch of, of phenomenal programmers and we took everything that I had in those Excel sheets and we made it into uh, what used to be called KDP Rocket and now Publisher Rocket. Uh, and that was back in the day we only had the keyword feature and the competition analyzer. And with those two features alone, you could then find out what people type into Amazon and more importantly, how many people type that into Amazon. So now you know which keywords people are searching for. But on top of that, we gave an ability for you to figure out if the market addressed that. Okay. So you have this keyword, you can look at the competition. We even have a competition score and you can see, you know what? I see what the market wants and nobody's presenting that. And that just kind of opens up, you know, pulls back the curtain and gives authors an, an ability to understand what's going on. Another real important for authors too is, is that you can validate your book idea before you even get started. You can use the same process we just talked about and you can start to see that, wow, there are books that are addressing this market, but they're not selling. Doesn't mean you can't write the book, but you now need to temper your expectations of knowing that, hey, even the top books that show up in front of this market, they're only making a hundred bucks a month. Now, if that's all you want and you know you can do a better job than that book, then go for it. You now know that you can do this. But if that is not what you had in mind, then understand that there isn't a big enough market to drive what you're expecting. So it sort of just takes away all the mysticism. It, it waves away the, 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 you know, the curtain of fog. And now you have a clear understanding of what to expect and what you can do to better the book itself. We then also created a category feature um, that the problem is, is that uh, there's 14,000 categories on Amazon. However, though, there is no place that lists every category. Uh, a lot of authors, when they go to publish their book, they'll see that, you know, select a category and a pop-up box shows up and they see all these categories. They think there's the list. Those aren't actually categories. Those are BISACs. Um, and BISACs are like an international standard code. It's like a supply chain logistics code. Barnes and Noble, iTunes, Amazon, all the bookstores use the BISAC codes and they use that with publishers, and then they take it, the book, the selected BISAC, and they put it in their respective category. So when you select from that pop-up box, you're selecting a BISAC, and then Amazon's placing you in something they think corresponds to that BISAC. But there's only 4,700 BISACs, and there's 14,000 Amazon categories. So there are a lot of categories that no authors are even selecting. So what we did was we took all 14,000, put it into our system, and we actually crawl and pull all the information in there. And now you can easily find the right categories for you. And you can immediately see how many books that day you would need to sell in order to be the new number one bestseller. So again, just taking away the guessing. And this is even more important now that authors can select 10 plus categories for their book. So knowing which categories to choose, finding the right ones that give you the best chance to be a bestseller uh, are extremely important. And our final feature too is our, we have our AMS ads feature that uh, is really quick and easy to help you build large list of keywords that pertain to your book. That's great. And, and, and both of those are, or all those things are super helpful. I want to kind of go piece by piece here. You talked about, and so, because a lot of people I think they'll think marketing, okay, perfect. My book's done. I, it's, there's editing, you know, I got the cover. It's time to market my book. Let me buy a publisher rocket. Let me go in and do some investigation. But you talked about way before the importance of, of using this tool or doing research to validate an idea. Can you talk a little bit more about that and anywhere else in the process, like pre I'm about to market my book, launch my book where publisher rockets really helpful to help set people up um, for more book sales or kind of like you said, maybe even temper expectations or decide which book idea to write? Yeah, there are three times to really use Publish Rocket. First is before you write the book. The second is while you're writing the book. And the third is right when you go to publish. Um, you could even say there's the fourth, which is continuation. But let's talk about those first three. The first one is before you write your book. Uh, so you have an idea and you are really excited about it. You can use Rocket to see if there's a market on Amazon right now. And the thing is, is that if you do your keyword research and you see that nobody's searching for that, or those kind of books are showing up, but nobody's buying them. And then that 
doesn't mean you can't write the book. It just means you can't expect Amazon to sell it for you. And now your marketing strategy, if you decide to write this book, should be about any tactic that goes and finds a market and brings it to your book. Because again, it doesn't mean that there aren't people out there. It just means they're not actively searching for your book. A, a good example of one of these uh, generally is memoirs. Memoirs are, are great. People love memoirs, but nobody sits down and says to themselves, oh man, I could really use a middle child memoir right now. Uh, instead though, it, you need interruptive marketing to get in front of them in order to convince them to bring it. And that's where like Amazon ads is a huge part. So going back to this, if you do your research beforehand, you now will know, can I depend on Amazon or not? And from there, if you decide to still write your book, you now have a stronger marketing strategy in the future because you know what to expect and what not to and where to focus in the future. So it's very key there. Um, in the middle, uh, I love to use it to help me to write the book better. What I mean by this is that as you do your keyword research, you're gonna find all the other tertiary terms and questions and types of books that people are looking for, and that can help you to research on what you should write about. A great example of this is a while ago, I was working with an author who was writing a book on how to sell art. That was the book. However, though, we found from Publisher Rocket that how to sell art online was actually being typed in way more than just the shorter term of how to sell art. The problem for this author was she hadn't covered the online part. She had just written the traditional sense. Now imagine what would have happened if she had written that book, published it, ranked number one in, in Amazon for you know how to sell art online and how to sell art. But we now know that the market wants the online component. She probably would have been destroyed in the reviews. Um, you know, even though it was a great book, she didn't cover what people wanted. She didn't answer the questions that people had. Uh, even more so, what we did with that knowledge was we then created a content upgrade for her book where it was listing the five top marketplaces to sell your art online and instructions on how to set up your account the right way. Her email subscription rate was through the roof. And again, it came from just understanding what the market really wanted. And she didn't change her book. She instead, or she didn't change what the book was about she improved it by covering what the market truly wanted and she had a much better book and a much better sales. So that's how it can help in the middle. And then obviously we talked about keywords, selecting your seven Kindle keywords the right way where you know it's gonna help give you the highest chance of being seen and discovered, that's that next component. And let's just dive straight into that. And, and then I wanna circle back to the category stuff and search back, uh, circle back to Amazon ads if we have time. So selecting your seven, uh, seven keywords, this is a big thing. This is a big part of the process. How do you do that well? And how do you select uh, the best keywords that'll help drive book sales, help with ranking, all those things? And then how do you also um, utilize Publisher Rocket to, to help with that? Yeah, in order to get keywords that help you, there's gotta be three things, okay? First, you need keywords that people actually type into Amazon. The second is they need to be keywords where people actually purchase and buy things for. And the third is it needs to be keywords where the competition isn't so great that you'll never rise to the top. Let's start with what people type in. I mean, obviously, if nobody types in that phrase, that phrase is never going to help you. OK, um, so you want to make sure that you are using keyword phrases that are actually being used. Without Rocket, you can easily do this by using incognito mode in Google, going to amazon.com, starting to type in phrases, and Amazon will try to guess at what you're typing by filling in the rest, and they're using information from, from previous searches to help. So you can start to see if that exists. Once you create a giant list of those phrases that pertain to your book, okay, and have been typed into Amazon, the next thing you can do is start to look at the books that show up for those phrases. Uh, if you click on the book, you can then look at the Amazon bestseller rank, which is uh, a rank from one being the most the best selling book in all of Amazon to, you know, 7.5 million, which is the worst selling book in all of Amazon. Uh, but you can see that rank. Now, if you don't know the ranking system off the top of your head, we have a calculator on Kindlepreneur. Just type in like Kindle calculator into Google. It should show up number one. Um, use that. Put in the ABSR there and it will tell you how many books that day has been sold. So if you're going through and checking the ABSR to sales for all these books and none of them are selling, like they're maybe selling one book a day, if that, then, and, and the next part is, but those books really do fit the keyword phrase, then now you know that the market may type it in, but they're not buying. Uh, imagine, imagine yourself as a shopper. 
okay? You go to amazon.com and you type something in. Do you always find the exact book you were looking for in the first search? No, no, you, you, you try it again. And you maybe add a little bit more and you add a little bit more to your phrase. Uh, I do this a lot in fiction. I'm a giant sci-fi military fan and I'll type in sci-fi military and I'll look and be like, oh, I know those books, I already read them. <laughs> Let's try it again. Sci-fi military alien invasion. And then, okay, now I see these alien invasion ones. Now I'll be like, all right, no, 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 that's not the kind of alien invasion I want. I want something more like uh, aliens, you know, from the movie Aliens, right? Um, so how about like bugs? I'll add bugs to the end of it. So now I've got sci-fi military alien invasion bug hunt. And now I find the kind of sci-fi military alien invasion that I was looking for. And you see what I'm saying? And I finally buy from that one, but I did four other searches before I got there. So the key is, is that making sure, you know, and again, looking, hey, do the books at least make sales? Uh, if I type something in and none of the books make sales, then either people decided not to buy or those books just didn't look good enough. And that's really a subjective opinion that you as the author need to make. So check to make sure that books sell uh, for that keyword. And if not, then figure out why. And finally, the last one is, is the competition so great that you can't win? Um, say, for example, you show up and you're like, oh, wow, look, this keyword is typed in. There's lots of sales. Oh, yeah, it's Stephen King. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Stephen King. Oh, Stephen King. Oh, Stephen King. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to beat Stephen King for this. You know, got it. Um, some of the things that you should use is, all right, how popular is the author? Um, are they big? If you're a nonfiction, do they have their own website? Is there proof of following? Do they have a huge social media? Um, another thing too is how good is their marketing efforts? Are they doing advertisement? Uh, how many reviews, recent reviews do they have? Do they have 700 plus, you know, five-star reviews? You know, <laughs> that's going to be harder. Or here's another uh, end of the spectrum is you show up and you see that book's making sales, but it's got an awful cover. And the book description, like quite frankly, falls flat, but people are still buying it. That's when you're like, sweet. You know, I know I can do a better job than that. And that book has proven that there's a hungry market willing to pay. This is where opportunity comes. And so doing that research right there really helps you. And I'm going to cap this too. A, a big thing about uh, keywords, and I said this in the beginning, but is making sure that the keywords really fit your book. Okay. This becomes really important uh, because the way Amazon treats your keyword, okay, is when you go to publish your book for the first time, they sort of give you the honeymoon period. Okay. And this is where a lot of authors have seen like that first month to three months where sales are coming in. And then afterwards, all of a sudden the, the honeymoon period drops and sales might drop, right? What happens during this honeymoon period is that Amazon gives you the benefit of the doubt and they take your keywords and they're showing you more. But what Amazon's really doing is they're showing you and they're starting to figure out, okay, we showed his book here but he didn't make as many sales as the other book did when that book was here. So he doesn't really deserve to be there. So we're going to let him drop and we're going to figure out where he should be. Or say, for example, you get there and oh man, you're doing better than the book did before you out. Let's try you here and here. And then what's even better is Amazon not only does that for just that keyword, they start branching you out into more keywords. They start saying, well, shoot, he did so well in sci-fi sci-fi military alien invasion bug hunt let's try just sci-fi military alien invasion okay now let's try um uh earth destroyed because that's we know us amazon knows that that's a good term that fits inside of this elk and therefore let's try that book in there you didn't write earth you know destroyed but amazon figures it out and so they start growing your books footprint in Amazon and showing you more and more. And if your book continues to convert and convert and convert, they'll just keep doing it until you finally hit that point where, okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's not converting. You know, it's, it's stuck right here. And this is where you see these long-term authors making lots of income. And that starts with starting with keywords that actually fit. So don't stretch it. That's not going to help you in the long run. Make sure that you've got phrases that truly fit because in the end, that's going to help you. That's great. And hey, let's let's switch gears to, to categories and then kind of in the home stretch here, if we have time, talk Amazon ads. What's your 90 second overview on how to pick great categories uh, and, and th that will maximize sales for your book and then also how to use Publisher Rocket to help with that? 
Yep. There are two ways that categories help with your book. The first one is if you're able to be a bestseller in it. Uh, when you are a bestseller in a category, you get the bestseller tag. Uh, what's awesome about that is that when your book shows up in those search results, so when book Amazon lists you, even if you're number seven, because you have that bestseller tag, your book sticks out. It's like a sore thumb, but in a good way. And so the, the shopper is going to naturally look at you. They're going to give you even more time because the word bestseller gives them what we call um, uh, social proof. Other shoppers have proven that they made this selection. It, it's kind of like, you know, when you go to um, any sales page, right? And you see, oh, so-and-so just bought in the past hour. Like you're like, oh, well, if other people made that decision, I can too. Same thing happens with the bestseller tag, okay, is that it drives that social proof. So if you can become a bestseller, that's absolutely number one. Number two is choosing categories that people shop at. So this is more so on fiction, but there are a lot of categories where people are like, oh my gosh, I can't get enough of that sci-fi military, <laughs> right? And I'll, I'll click on that and I'll look at those top 100 and I'll see if any interests me. Uh, I'm actually a diehard lit RPG fan, love it. I click on that category all the time so that I can see what's up. Um, but the, uh, the thing about that is that with nonfiction, it's not as big because in nonfiction, there aren't that many people that, oh my goodness, I can't wait for the next algebra book to come out. Like it doesn't work that way. Um, but there are some that are out there though. Self-help is definitely big. Um, there are a couple out there, but the key is, is that there are a certain percentage of categories that really do get shopped on. And so those can help. So when looking at what an author should do, uh, my recommendation is, like I said before, you get 10 plus categories you can select from. I really drive hard to look for seven where I have a good chance of being a bestseller at some point. Remember, bestseller status changes based off of who in that category is selling the most at that time. So whereas this might be the awesome category today, this other one might be the awesome one next day. So make at least seven of those ones where you found where you have the best chance to be a bestseller. The other three are ones where you're like, man, if I was Stephen King himself, I know I could be in that category. Put yourself in there. I think that that, especially if that's a great fit for your book, because Amazon uses what categories you choose as a way to kind of help kind of marry that with the keywords you selected and show you in those other terms we talked about. Uh, just because you were selling well in sci-fi military uh, alien invasion, okay, they know from your categories that you're not a romance. So they're not gonna put you in sci-fi military romance, see? So that's a really key thing, is making sure that you've got good categories that fit. That's great. Uh, let's talk kind of in the home stretch here, Amazon ads. I, I think there's a lot of people that don't do them because they're just yeah. so intimidated. It's like, I don't wanna pay for Amazon ads. What if they don't work? How, do I, how would I even set them up? Do I need to pay someone else to set them up? You know, maybe, I mean, there's legitimate concerns like my publisher has the access to my Amazon account. And so that sucks. Um, that but <laughs> can, you, can you walk people through kind of the, the overview of why Amazon ads, who should run Amazon ads and what's like the 101 of how to get them set up uh, and how can they use Publisher Rocket to help with the Amazon ads uh, side, of the, side of things? Yeah, so um, the best way to understand is advertisement is a great interruptive market. You're, tr you're getting your book in front of people and trying to convince them to get your book at that point. When you're doing this on Facebook, okay, the problem with Facebook is that people are on Facebook for entertainment. They're not there to shop. They are looking at cat pictures, food, what their friends are doing, the latest politics of somebody else. Um, fun times today. Um, they're, they're, they're looking for those things. And you're trying to convince them to stop what they're doing leave the comfort of Facebook, go over to Amazon, choose to buy a book at that point, and more importantly, to buy your book. That is a lot of steps. Amazon ads, on the other hand, you're only trying to convince them to buy your book. You see, they're already on Amazon. They've already decided to buy a book. They're just trying to figure out which one. So your Amazon ad is just there to convince them to buy your book. I think it's much easier. The other thing is that, um, one of the things we found is what's what we're calling the popularity effect, okay? Amazon is looking at how popular your book is. If your book is not selling at all, then you're going to just be non-existent to them because you were there, you didn't sell, goodbye. Amazon ads, though, even if you're doing Amazon ads, Amazon sees the sales, regardless of whether they're coming organically or from your ads, 
and they start to say, oh man, look at this, this is going, it's consistently making sales. I think Amazon ads is a major contributor as to why many books continue to have sales over time. And a lot of times when authors start ads, I've seen this where they're like, oh, I did the ads, but I'm spending more uh, for my ads than I'm gaining from the sales. And I'm like, okay, but overall, how many sales have you had? And a lot of times author was like, oh, actually, you know, I've been making more sales of this. And I'm like, it's because of your ads. Your ads have shown Amazon that you're still relevant and popular and they're showing you more organically the ones that you're not paying for. I think the biggest issue that I have with Amazon ads is, is that the reporting system isn't as good in their favor as it should be. Now they just rectify this uh, a little bit. Back in the day, um, and I mean like only a month ago, um, you could not, if you were in Kindle Select or KU, you could not see how many pages read were attributed to your ads. So a lot of authors were just seeing the sales and they're like, oh, I'm not making many sales, but man, my KU pages are going off. And it's like, that's your ads. It's like, but they would report that. Nope. <laughs> They weren't, but now they are. The point though is there's a lot of benefits that come from your ads, even more so than what you can see from your dashboard. So you can really help keep the, the momentum and the popularity of your, your book going. You can get your book discovered. I think ads are an incredibly awesome tool. I also 100% recommend to authors that when they do their first book launch, my biggest recommendation is when you're done with all the efforts you have to push and market your book and you start to kind of run out of ideas, that's the absolute time to hit the Amazon ad. So you can keep that, that marketing momentum you created going. And that way you'll prolong the sales instead of seeing the drop off once you're done. That's great. What, what are the biggest, and, and we're kind of the home stretch here, right at the, right at the buzzer. Last, last question or two. Um, what are the biggest mistakes you see people make with Amazon ads? You, you kind of already talked a little bit about that and, and how, how can they use publisher rocket and kind of some of the tools that you guys have to be even more effective um, yeah. with, with their ads. One of the biggest mistakes I see is that people will set up their ads and then they, but they'll choose like 10 keywords. Like these are the 10 words I want to rank for. And you know what? I really wish Amazon would let us do this, but it doesn't work this way. Uh, I wish that I could just say Amazon, Tell me how much I need to pay to rank number one for that word and I will pay it and then they actually show me for it. They don't. It's kind of weird. You never know what exactly is going to be the phrase that sets you over the top. When I was doing the ads for Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income, we found that the number one phrase that worked that made a lot of sales for him was Ivanka Trump. This was years ago. Okay. Um, his book's not about Ivanka or Trump or, or any of the politics or anything like that. What his book was about was how to validate your your business idea and what we figured out was is that there was a lot of people not pushing politics here but there are a lot of people that were looking for you know female entrepreneurs and uh female leadership and things like that and really their true search was about because they wanted to be an entrepreneur that they wanted to be a leader and so when they typed in things like Ivanka Trump, which nobody else was advertising for, and a book about validating your book idea, or your, excuse me, your business idea pops up at the top, people are like, oh, well, that's actually what I really want. And they would click and purchase this book. And so again, it, that's kind of an example of how you may end up with keywords that drive the most sales, but you never would have thought of them. And so looking and shotgunning and, and getting a mass amount of, e of keywords to be able to test is key. And if anybody's afraid of that, I would say it's okay because you only pay Amazon if somebody clicks on your book. So say for example, we'd put Ivanka Trump and nobody clicked on it because it had nothing to do with it, right? Well, didn't cost Pat anything, like nothing at all. Only if somebody was shopping, I was like, oh, a book about uh, going over my book idea or my uh, business idea. Cool. Um, and if they clicked on it, and if they didn't buy it, well, that means they got to your sales page and there was something about it that changed their mind or didn't seal the deal. So a big thing to recap on that is, is making sure that you have enough keywords. And that's really where we designed Publisher Rocket was because in order to do effective ads, I'm usually doing three to five campaigns. Like in the end, I have three to five campaigns running per book and about 800 keywords per campaign. Now, to, in order to do that, I had to copy and paste, write, type, click, it would take me hours to put it together, 
Uh, luckily, I have a programming team. So I was like, hey guys, this is what I do when I create my ads. So help me to do this more effectively and efficiently. And we designed a system that pulls those keywords and ASIN numbers and all the things that you can use um, and just allows you to copy and paste it right into your adverts. And if anybody is interested in learning about Amazon ads or has any questions about it, we have an absolutely free course uh, for Amazon ads that we can make sure to put in the links below. And that way you can sign and truly understand what it is and get going on this. Cool, that's awesome. Dave, this has been great, action packed. Uh, we, we covered a lot of ground as always and, and I'm over here taking notes and uh, making, <laughs> making notes of things uh, to implement kind of uh, uh, with the team and, uh, and, and uh, getting, getting tasks set up and all that stuff. Um, uh, so th this has been awesome, man. Uh, really appreciate you. A couple final questions. Uh, and we'll go real quick. I know we both are running into a, a, a time block here, but um, real quick, you, you spoke at Author Advantage Live last year. I know you were kind of in and out uh, briefly, uh, and, uh, but, but you spoke and we got to hang out and you got to see, uh, meet with some of the attendees, stuff like that. What was your experience? What were some of your takeaways and any thoughts? We've, we've got a virtual one coming up this year. Like any thoughts for people who are thinking about uh, showing up to Author Advantage Live 2020 virtual experience? Yeah, I, I wish that something like that had been around when I first started. I mean, the biggest part was trying to figure this all this information out. Um, a lot of times I doubted if I would ever be able to succeed. And I think one of the greatest things, too, is seeing all the people who took this art seriously and built. And, and even more so, I love hearing about people's failures that then rose upon it because everybody has failures. And that helps me to understand that, hey, you know what? It's no different when my first book failed. The key is I wrote the second one and I did better the second time and so forth. And I think that's just one of the most powerful things you can gain. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Awesome, Dave. Hey, appreciate you as always, guys. If, if you want to get uh, get uh, Publisher Rocket, um, go to the show notes. We've got a link where you can get it. Also, obviously, if you're a self-publishing school student, um, we've got an exclusive discount. You can get that there. Um, check that out. Um, either way, I'm a huge fan of, of Publisher Rocket and using it, uh, as Dave said, in, in in the different phases of your book. <laughs> Validating the idea in the beginning, during the process, during launch, uh, all those things. It's just an amazingly helpful uh, piece of software. It's one of our students just rave about it all the time uh, and, and just love using it. I was on a call with my assistant yesterday and she was talking about it. <laughs> it's like how she used it as part of her book, uh, book launch and her husband was a self-publishing school student back in the day as well. And like he used it and he was showing her how to use it just like, uh, it's an amazingly helpful tool, uh, an amazingly helpful piece of software. So um, check out the link in the show notes, as well as uh, if you want to join, join us at Author Advantage Live this year, we'd love to have you. It's a virtual experience this year. So a little bit different, but our goal is to create, recreate uh, a similar experience in person, uh, but virtually. So you can go to, you can get a ticket at authoradvantagelive.com, uh, depending on when you're seeing this. It may or may not be coming up real soon or have already happened, in which case uh, you can grab a ticket for next year authoradvantagelive.com. Dave, thanks so much, man. You're the man. This was amazing as always. You bet. And thanks for having me. Awesome. See ya.